Good evening, church. How we doing? Happy Wednesday. Happy midweek to you. I hope this week has treated you well. I hope that you're thriving in the process. And I hope that you've really been enjoying the weather. I know for one, I have been. And the last week or so has been absolutely beautiful. I think it's finally safe to say that fall is officially here. So go ahead and pull out those sweaters, the pumpkin spices, the apple cinnamons, whatever it is that gets you festive in the fall season. I think it's finally safe to say that it's here. And so we've been going through midweeks, and tonight we're going to be starting a new series called Tactics. And it's a book that's written by Gregory Kokel, and he's an apologist that's talking about how you and I can be well-equipped to share our faith. In fact, it doesn't have to be that complicated. So for the next few weeks, as we progress through October, we're going to walk through some of the main principles that he uh, that he suggests in this book. And so it's called Tactics, and just from the name itself, you can get an idea of what we're going to be doing in this series. And we're going to talk about how you and I can develop a game plan, a tactical approach, and how we can share our faith with each other. I know we've talked about similar series in past midweeks, but I think it's crucial that we take time, at least every opportunity we can get, to encourage one another to share our faith as often as we can. Because I think that we've overcomplicated it in such a way that we forget what it's all about. And so I love this book because he suggests right off the beginning that this doesn't have to be so complicated. And he uses this thing that he, he kind of coined called the Columbo effect. Now, Columbo was this lieutenant colonel uh, detective type personality, always had a big cigar in his mouth. And, uh, and he was just kind of uh, the Mr. Magoo way of doing detective work. And so before he'd leave every scene, he would always just kind of talk to somebody. And there would always be one more question, one more question, one more question. And then people would end up incriminating themselves just because he was so tactful with the way that he approached the conversation. And that's kind of the principles that he lays out through this book is that you and I, when we come up with a game plan and we can figure out how to talk to one another, things begin to shift. And conversations begin to happen, and we don't even realize that it's forming. And so before we even get into the book Tactics, I kind of wanted to use this midweek as more of an introductory to this series and uh, and talk about maybe one of the examples that Jesus gives to us and how to approach people in the conversation about our faith. And so the best example that I know of comes from John chapter 4, and I'm going to summarize the main part of the story, but there are key verses that I really want to talk about as we introduce this series Tactics. So John chapter four is where Jesus goes to Samaria. It says right at the beginning that he and his disciples, they had to go through Samaria. They didn't really have to, but Jesus is trying to make a point here. And so as they're moving through, going through Samaria, Jesus, he knows what's going on. He's got this timed out perfectly that he's going to meet this woman who's at the well. She goes at the sixth hour, the Bible says. And so in this time, time started at 6 a.m., and so the sixth hour would be noon, and we're in this desert region of Samaria, so it is hot. The problem is, is this girl is here by herself. She didn't get to go early in the morning with the other women because she was kind of outcasted because of just the livelihood that she chose to live. And so she's not really accepted amongst her community. She's kind of the outcast. She's the one that you keep your kids away from. She's the one that you talk about behind her back as she's moving from the marketplace or the grocery store or the gas station, whatever it is. Um, she's the one that you just kind of avoid altogether. So she's just used to this and she goes to the well at noon by herself, tries to get some just some water for the day. And that's where Jesus approaches her. Jesus sends his disciples out. They're trying to go get food in Samaria. So that's a whole lesson in itself is sending a bunch of Jewish people out into this world of Samaria to go gather some food. So imagine the challenges with that. And so while they're gone, Jesus is alone here at the well where he is introducing himself to this woman. And he starts out with a casual conversation, something so simple. And I think this is the first lesson that you and I can start to pick up as we learn the avenue of tactics when approaching people about our faith is that we can start with common ground. We don't have to get super spiritual. We don't have to mention Jesus or the Bible or anything right off the bat. We can simply start by something that is so common. And Jesus does the same thing. He simply asks the woman, can you get me a cup of water? Now that seems so simple, doesn't it? I mean, any of us, we have to drink. We, I think we can only survive without water for three days. So eventually you're going to need something. And if you're out and about and, and you go somewhere, you're going to ask for a drink. And you can take that conversation and move it in to a spiritual one, which is exactly what Jesus does. And so as she pulls him up some water, he sits there with her. He starts to share with her things about her life that no one else would know. 
And she starts to say, oh, I see, you're, uh, you're one of those prophet guys, aren't you? And as he continues the conversation, she realizes that this is more than just a prophet. This is the Messiah who we've been hoping would come. And so Jesus finally, for the first time, publicly announces that, yes, I am the one whom you hope for. And so now, this is where we need to get into. Now, as the disciples are coming back, they bring food. Jesus is right where they left him. And here's where it takes place. So we're going to be in John chapter 4, starting with verse 34. And that, like I said, the disciples have now returned. They're trying to offer him some food, and Jesus kind of rejects it. And here's what, what what's happening. Verse 34. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. So he's explaining why he's not really hungry right now. And so do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here is the saying holds true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. And others have labored and you have entered into their labor. So this is key for what's going on. And I think and what he suggests in this book, I think is crucial, is that we, we overcomplicate evangelism because we're not in the right seat. And what I mean by that is every one of us want to be the one who reaps the harvest. Right? We all want to be that one who closes the deal, who can go talk to somebody about their faith, and all of a sudden they're so intrigued to come with you, they come to Jesus, and we all want that check mark on our book. But what Jesus is saying here is that there are two categories of people. There are those who are the sowers, and then there are those who are the reapers. They're the ones who are out planting, the ones who are gardening, and then the ones who are harvesting. And I think so often we overcomplicate apologetics and we overcomplicate evangelism because every one of us wants to be the harvester, but very few of us want to be the gardener. And so what this book does is it helps us understand that mo most of us, our role is to simply be the gardener. There are a few people who are called to be the harvesters, and maybe when we start to uh, understand where our role lies in this, things become better for us. And so maybe the, the right approach as we get ready to start this series called Tactics is to simply understand that I may need to be a gardener and maybe not always the person who's in the harvest, reaping what everyone else has sown. And what Jesus is saying is the disciples here had nothing to do with her faith coming. In fact, it's been the work of many other people who have been planting seeds in this woman's life. They just get to harvest and reap what others have sown. They get to reap what other workers have done. And then he says this key verse right here. Uh, let's see, I think it's verse 36. Yeah, already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life. Here it is. So that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. So when we find our place, when we understand that sometimes we need to be the gardener and sometimes we will be the harvester, but regardless, when we are working together, we all get to celebrate when one person comes to Jesus, when one person comes and we all get to celebrate. So let me ask you this as we kind of close out our midweek today. Do you understand how valuable you are in the process of winning people to Jesus, whether you are planting the seed or whether you are harvesting the field? And what I mean by that is you're closing the deal. You may not be the person that's initiated the conversation with Jesus, but you get to reap the reward of someone else. Or maybe you're sitting in the seat where you need to start the conversation. You need to start planting the seed. And what that means is planting a stone in their shoe, which is what we're going to talk about next week. You just need to get people to be a little bit uncomfortable. And that's taking these trivial conversations and turning them into a spiritual one. That's asking for a drink of water and then making them think about their, their faith, their politics, whatever it is that they feel like they have value in and make them challenge the way that they think. And so that's what we're going to talk about next week. And so I'm excited for this series. I've really enjoyed this book. It's opened my eyes up to a lot of different ways that we can start the process of evangelism. And I think that if we do this well and we understand what our role is, I think it becomes a lot smoother. And so some of us may need to sit in the gardening seat and we need to start reaping the seeds out. We need to start laboring into the field and start putting the pebbles in the shoes of our neighbors and our friends and our families. 
Friends, have a great midweek. I'm excited to go through this series with you, and we are going to do a great thing for the kingdom of God. So we hope to see you here this weekend. If nothing else, we'll see you next Wednesday at midweek.